Welcome to the Guest X Podcast, where my co-host Brian Hamaui and I uncover the latest technologies and human-driven initiatives that are raising customer expectations and forever changing how we define customer experience. If you are passionate about creating incredible content and unique experiences, join us as we talk to leading product and experience experts across the globe and learn how today's most successful brands are setting themselves apart from the competition. Welcome to another uh, week's episode of the Guest X podcast. I am your co-host, Matthew Loney, and it is, uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm here with my co-host, Brian Hamaui. Uh, Brian, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Beautiful day here in Orlando, Florida. Uh, so excited to do this podcast today. Yeah, yeah, very excited. Uh, before we jump into it, uh, a special thank you. Again, we've got, I think this is two or three weeks in a row now, um, introducing another partner of ours, Breezeway, uh, has joined the Guest X podcast along with Sojo. We've got Explory, we've got Abode PR, uh, just a lot of really cool both service and technology companies that are all you know, trying to help lodging providers across a number of different segments and verticals of lodging, but trying to help them with their guest experience. I, I think it's really cool. I'm thrilled to have uh, Breezeway. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to have Breezeway uh, be part of this podcast as well. You know, they, they help us definitely enhance the guest experience. I think a combination between Sojo and Breezeway, you've got uh, the making for uh, excellent guest stays. So yeah. excited yeah. to have them both on. Absolutely. In an industry that does need help right now, you know, operationally with staffing shortages and everything else. And we're going to hear a little bit about that today. Why, why don't you, uh, I think, uh, introduce our guest today. This is going to be going to be a really fun episode. Yeah, today's episode is a, a really interesting episode. We've got the uh, CEO of Cassiola Vacation Homes and Guest Store, uh, Dennis Hothead. Um, Dennis and I um, have had, you know, a few years of actually getting to know each other in, in the local market. He's pioneered uh, one of the most iconic vacation rental companies here. Uh, he'll talk about some of the branding strategies has had, he's had and um, how it's actually pivoted into uh, his expansion into different markets uh, and also into a new product, Guest Store, which is an investment community that makes vacation rental investing uh, accessible and safe to the traditional investors. So Dennis, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, excited to be here. And we're excited to have you. Dennis and I actually know each other from the industry pretty well. So I'm excited to have some chats with you. Uh, we've, we've had lunch and stuff and have had always some, some good conversations. So I think it's really cool to be able to broaden that and give our audience uh, a little bit of a chance to get to know you, get to know Cassiola, um, how you grew the company, because you really grew from, from a small company up. But before, before we get to that, I'd love for our audience to actually get to know a little bit about your background and how you got into vacation rentals, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. And we're actually just a few miles apart. We should have met in I know. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, so I, I have an uh, um, e-commerce uh, uh, background. So before getting into this uh, um, industry, um, I actually started um, an online printing uh, company in uh, Europe. Europe. I'm uh, originally from uh, Belgium. That's where I grew up. Um, and I always have been like an entrepreneur. So I started my first uh, company um, the week after I turned 18, which was the legal um, age to start a company. Um, and actually, we started out as a supplier for all kinds of um, yeah, supplies for, for events. Um, so that included sound and light equipment, um, but also drinks um, and the marketing part of, of uh, events, which was uh, posters, flyers, uh, t-shirts and, and, and so on. Um, and, and from there on that business um, grew into an online printing company because after a while we noticed that there was a lot of demand from, from regular companies also to, to order uh, posters and flyers uh, um, from us because we had a really um, cool system where we would uh, combine different owners uh, orders from different uh, customers 
on one big uh, printing sheet to, to uh, um, save on, on uh, setup costs. And uh, we were so much uh, cheaper than, than a traditional uh, uh, printing company. So for a while, um, our, our B2B customers were much, much uh, bigger than our uh, party customers. So uh, uh, we decided to pivot the company and, and sell everything regarding events um, off and just focus on um, the online uh, printing parts. Um, and that really, grew into an e-commerce business basically because everything was done online we didn't have sales people on, on the road so visiting customers everything went uh, um, to a website so you could just uh, um, order online design um, your your business cards or, or brochures online we would uh, print it in, in offset on the big big uh, printing machines and then ship it to your home or, or, or office uh, very similar, actually, than what the Vista Print uh, um, does here in, in, in the U.S. So, um, at the end, we had offices in, in seven different uh, European uh, countries, and we also opened a uh, production facility in North Africa and in, in Morocco. Uh, in Marrakesh, we had a uh, printing uh, facility, and then in Casablanca, we had a big um, call center and design center um, to help customers uh, designing their, their artwork. Very wow. interesting. Yeah. So then what brought you over to the, to the States, Dennis, and, and how, and why, why vacation rentals? I mean, obviously you're an entrepreneur, so you were probably looking for businesses, but, but why this, why this industry? Why now? Yeah, so um, I sold the company in 2013, um, and my actual goal was to slow down a little bit. Um, I, I felt a little bit too young to, to retire, so I wanted to keep busy. Um, and yeah, property management uh, um, seemed easy enough. Um, I was envisioning myself sitting at the pool all day in, in sunny Florida um, with a cocktail and, and my laptop just waiting until someone needed something. Um, unfortunately, that was a big, big uh, mistake. I started my life as the, the first uh, uh, few years in, in property management. Um, it's, it's a really hard business. It's nonstop, 24-7, and, and that is what makes it so Art, uh, you never, as, especially as a small company, because in the beginning it was just me and, and my wife doing everything. So we didn't have any employees or call centers. So it was us really being on call 24 seven. Um, and yeah, you basically never get to, to disconnect. So that makes it so uh, uh, tough. Um, I remember several times that we wanted to go to the movies and 10 minutes into the movie, I got a call, had to walk out of the theater, um, helping a guest. Um, and yeah, at, at one point after I think six months or, or so, um, we finally got to, to take like a day off or, or, or there were not a lot of arrivals and, and, and uh, um, departures. So uh, we packed all our stuff and went to the beach, um, beautiful clear water, which is um, I think with traffic on a weekend, uh, uh, probably a three hour drive. So we drove all the way out there. Uh, we installed everything, our umbrella on, on the beach. And literally 10 minutes later, I got a call from a guest that had locked himself out somehow. We, they left through um, the balcony door, jumped over um, the, the balcony railing. It was a ground floor uh, condo and, and the door was locked from the um, inside. Um, closes it locked automatically and yeah we had to to pack in and, and drive three hours back uh, um, to Orlando to assist that guest and that was actually a point that I, I said to my wife I, I told her I said look this is not what I want to do this is not why I came uh, um, to the to the US um, so either grow the business so we can hire staff and and uh, we don't have to work 24 7 anymore or we sell it again and, and do something else. Um, so that was in 2014. Um, I, we decided to keep the business and grow it um, because I saw so much potential in this industry. Um, things have changed a lot in the last few years, um, but 2014 was just the time that Airbnb was launching and, and, and growing. They weren't as big as they are right now. 
Um, but I, I, I thought this, this industry has huge potential. Um, so if we do it right, um, we, we are able to, to build a really beautiful future um, here. So that's, that's what we did and that's how it started. Yeah, you guys have done an amazing job. So when Cassiola first started, I used to see, you know, the, the vans running around and I'd see one or two of them rolling around town. And, I, you know, at the time, I still had my property management company as well. And mm -hmm. I said, what the heck are these guys coming in with pink vans? They're, they're insane. Um, <laughs> who would yeah. think about having a pink logo with the house and all of this kind of stuff? And it's starting to feel like Airbnb. And so, but it's stuck. And, and I think there's a, a lot of kudos that go to you for thinking through the process of the branding of the actual company. Talk to us about how you thought about the brand of Cassiola, the colors, what the inspiration behind the actual company itself. And then how does that translate into the way you guys service the vacation rentals, your guests? Because guests are starting to recognize you guys as a brand, not just a vacation rental company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So just to set the record straight, um, technically it's not pink, it's uh, magenta. Um, <laughs> magenta. But pink is pink. Is pink. <laughs> so um, yeah, having a marketing uh, background. So before I started here, I, I did some market uh, um, research. And one of the things I did um, was just collecting all the competitors that I could find. I, I uh, uh, made a big uh, sheet with all their names, um, their websites, but also their logos. Um, so I had these huge sheets uh, with, with probably 40, 50 of the major uh, property management companies in, in this uh, area. And I decided to go with the exact opposite color of what everybody else uh, had. So all the logos actually look very similar if you put them together. They all have the blues and the yellows and the greens, so like the water, the sky, the sun. Um, e even a lot of these uh, logos have the, the same elements uh, uh, in it. It's usually a house and a palm tree uh, or a sun or, or something. So I wanted something um, different. Um, so I went with a color that was the furthest away from all these other colors. And that turned out to be um, this, this magenta, <laughs> basically. And yeah, I think the, the, the color now is probably the, the strongest part of our um, brand. And, and uh, for me, it really clicked uh, um, a few years in. I, I went to an event and, and usually when, when I went to these events in the beginning, I would uh, um, get a suit and, and, and dress up a little bit. Uh, but that day, probably something happened. It's, it's property management, so always something happens. And I, I didn't have time to change, so I went straight from whatever I was doing to that event wearing my um, yeah, magenta polo. Um, and a few months later, I, uh, I met someone at a completely different event and, and she came to me and says, oh, I remember you. I saw you um, two months back at, at this event. Um, and she didn't remember my name anymore. So she didn't know who I was. She didn't remember the company name, but she did remember the color. And um, I thought, wow, this is, is so strong. And, and from that day on, we never wore anything else um, than our magenta uniforms at any event. And yeah, we're, we're having more people now. So it really stands out even at the VRMA when we're there with 10, 15 people. Um, yeah, everybody sees us. Most people just a property manager and, and we're promoting our brand everywhere where we go. That's interesting. Interesting that you say that because it does kind of appear, you know, I've been to Verma when you guys are there. I think you were there this, this past year in um, San Antonio. And I remember it, it, the booth, the logo, everything kind of does feel like a vendor who's trying, you know, to, to build a brand. And I hadn't thought of that, but you're right. there is a distinct difference usually when you look at the property manager's branding and positioning and the vendors. That's really fascinating. But, but Dennis, while the magenta color is beautiful and it certainly helped, it is not in and of itself what has gotten you guys from, I believe is 30 to now 400 vacation rentals under management. Um you know, you look at that over the span of, you know, seven, eight years. I mean, that's growing 50, 60, 70 a year, you know, in some years. 
Um, and you know, with COVID in there and the Orlando market has been, has been hit a little harder than some of the other leisure markets because of its reliance on international travel. So kudos to you guys. Can you talk a little about that scaling? You, you know, we talked before we got, uh, before we started recording the podcast about, you know, how a lot of people today, you know, you scale, everybody's trying to scale through acquisitions, but there's some real value to building it organically. If you can figure out how to do that, would love to hear what you think is contributed to your success since 2014, when you decided to really get behind this and build the brand, what, what, what have, what's led to the success you guys have had? Yeah. Um, we have a set of company values and, and one of the values I, I think that really sets us apart is, um, we like to do we love to do things a little bit different and find a better way um that's that the value that we have and when i started in this industry i did not know anything about property management or or managing prop so everything that i did uh was based on my previous experience and my background in, in e-commerce um so and, and i think that is uh, um the big uh, um, difference when we when you look at e-commerce you are constantly making changes doing a b tests um and and the smallest improvement um in the long term has a huge uh, um, impact on, on the uh, business results and and that's also how i approached uh, property management so I remember when I just um, started, we bought a small existing business with, with 30 homes, all in, in one resort. With the purchase of the, the business, um, it came with like two weeks of, of training. So I was sitting there and the previous business owner was, was training me in how everything works. And this must have probably been the two longest weeks um, in, in my life. Um, Thing. Um, she was explaining me, um, she didn't even finish her sentence. And in my head, I already had something like, oh, I'm going to change this. Oh, I'm going to do this differently. Out of respect, I didn't tell her, of course, but <laughs> at the time, when we started, every guest, when they did a booking, they had to fill out. No, they, they got an email with an attachment. They had to print that out on paper fill out the form, sign it, and, and fax it back. There was a paper with the, the rental agreement, but also the credit card info. So that was 2014. Uh, um, it's not 40 years ago. Uh, um, it's seven, eight years ago. So there were so many things that I thought, like, no, this has to be different. This can be so much better. And, and I think it's really in the DNA of our company. Everything that we do, we ask the same question, how can we do this better? And this goes from housekeeping, laundry, to, to owner relations, to guest relations. And, and that's also the reason why um, after a few years, we started building our, our own software because no one in, in the market um, shared the vision that I had. So. Uh, we do use a lot of uh, tools from, from yeah, vendors that, we, that you guys all know, uh, but there were so many things that we wanted to do differently and, and that no one could, could offer us. Um, so we started building um, our own software and, and it actually all started um, with me wanting to have an, an overview of everything that was going on in, in my properties. Um, because if you have 10 properties, it's easy to remember everything. This, um, you don't remember when the last time was that the carpet was cleaned or, or uh, when the house was uh, serviced the last that the AC of the house was serviced the last time. So I know we had all that data in, in different uh, uh, software systems and, and, and different locations and I wanted to bring all of that together. And what we did is I created uh, what we call a property timeline. It's, it's almost like um, a or an Instagram feed where you see all the updates, everything that happens uh, um, in a property nicely together. And then I had that on a property level, but also on a company level. So I could in real time see everything that everybody was doing uh, um, all day uh, long. So it gave me really a good overview to, to see what was going on in, in, in my business. And then um, after a while I was thinking, okay, now we have all that information, which is great. 
Uh, but my owner's team is basically all day they get questions from owners and then they look into our system and see, oh, when was this loss done? Okay, and then they communicate that with the owners by, by email or, or by phone. So I thought, hey, why don't we just give owners access to the uh, same information than uh, how we have? And, and that is where our owner application uh, was born. So of my Casiola and, and our owners have real-time access to literally everything that happens in their property. Um, so from the moment the housekeeper enters the home, the owner is gonna see that the housekeeper is there. Um, then the home, the, the, the housekeeper is cleaning. From the moment they're done, the owner can see that the housekeeping is done. They also have to fill out a whole report with, uh, with photos. So everything is shared in real time. Same with, with um, reviews from guests. When it comes in, it goes at the same time to, to us as to the owners. So um, that really created um, a very, very high level of transparency, which is something owners just love. Um, it's not always easy. And I remember when I announced this system internally to the team, they all thought I was crazy. Um, they said, oh, well, our owners are going to run away because now they're going to see all the mistakes that we make and, and everything that goes wrong. And, and I, I really had to fight here internally to get this uh, um, released because they didn't want to do it. So I, I told them, OK, just pick five of your favorite owners, the, the, the easiest owners that you have. And we're going to start with them. We roll it out and, 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 and we get feedback from them, see how they respond. Of course, they, they loved it. So then I said, OK, now we're going to add 10 more. And, and each week uh, um, I, I let them pick like 10 owners to add into that My Casiola app. And it turned out um, it wasn't that bad. Uh, we didn't get like every five minutes a call because a new review came in or, or the, the, the housekeeper reported something broken. Um, owners actually loved the, uh, um, the transparency, um, the information. They didn't need to contact us about everything uh, um, anymore. Um, they had the information available when they wanted to. Um, and of course, sometimes, um, yeah, we do make mistakes, but uh, we have to own them. And, and yeah, we cannot hide them because everything happens in real time. We cannot uh, <laughs> delete any entries or, 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 or hide something uh, from an owner. They, they see everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And, and all those different uh, things that we do um, really make us, make, make us different in the market. Uh, we have uh, um, something to offer owners that, that most other companies cannot uh, um, offer. And, and owners get used to having uh, access to that, all that information. So, um, and this is just one example. Like I said, it, it's everywhere. We were also one of the first ones to start with uh, dynamic pricing and revenue management in, in this market. Everybody was still using seasonal rates um, and, and yeah, every uh, facet of the business, we always try to look at and say, hey, how can this be better? How can the guest experience be better? The owner experience, also the employee experience. And, and yeah, that's uh, what brought us where we are today. Talk to us a little bit about the guest experience side. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's a pretty, it's a very important topic, especially in our market. We've got a lot of turnover. We've got different types of clientele that are coming into this market. Some good, some yeah. not so good. And, you know, it's, it's very hard to explain some of this stuff to, to owners as well. One question before we get into that. Do you guys display reviews and review comments to your owners through your owner portal? Yes, we do. Yeah. And I think that that's really important because, and I think we've talked about this, Matt, before, which is reviews coming from us to homeowners on improvements or things that need to be done in a home, typically from a property manager, it doesn't come through that well. It just sounds like there's work that we're asking them to do. But I think it's coming directly from a guest uh, and it's actionable. And it's something that happens time and time again. It's provable. And all of a sudden you've got something that needs to be improved in a house, there's proof there. Uh, there's, there's a trust factor between the owner, the property manager, and the guests that are leaving the reviews, which means enhancing the home. Is that, is that something that's fair to say? You guys use that as a tool to be able to get your owners to maintain the homes and the quality of the house? 
Yeah, absolutely. And um, like I mentioned, the owners get the review at the exact same time that we get it. So um, we have had many situations in the past where owners are already on the line with our owners team saying, oh, I, I saw the guest report that the mattress being met. Um, you can go ahead and replace it. So some of them actually reach out to us um, to do improvements uh, um, in their home because they saw that review and and um, yeah, they're very sensitive to those uh, um, have to get that their guests have the best uh, experience possible so um, that is definitely um, helping um, of course when they're complaining about um, the cleanliness or 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 something that is our responsibility um, it's a little bit harder can be uh, difficult at, at times but uh, again I, I believe overall it makes us better as a company um, we can hide it and ignore it and not share it with the owner uh, but in the long run um, now we have an extra uh, 400 set of eyes looking at everything that we do um, and that makes us all perform better because we know that they're looking at what we're doing. It's, it's accountability uh, and, and just doing our very best to do everything as good as possible. And we do make mistakes and, and, and um, yeah, we just have to own them. Everybody is going to make mistakes um, as well, guests, as owners, as, as, as a management company. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, you have to learn from them, uh, adapt and adjust and, and yeah, make sure that it doesn't happen uh, um, over and over again. I, th I think let's talk about, let's talk about the guest experience. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I just, I think it's great. I think, you know, I had written down, you know, transparency, obviously, but accountability too, that Dennis said, and I, I just think it's, it is fantastic. It is going to bite you, but you know what the, the days and, and, and I don't say, historically, I don't think we did it. Um, cause we're, you know, as an industry, cause you were trying to hide things, right. It was just, you know, we didn't have the sources of data that we did, but, but I think there's always been a concern with owners that, you know, things were kind of done behind a curtain, right? Like their breakdown of the fees and the, you know, and what, what improvements seem to be made and all that. And you're really, by bringing that all out, it allows everybody to really look at and go, okay, how do we make this better? So, so kudos to you, Des. I, I think that's, that's excellent, but go ahead, Brian. Yeah. I think the next topic I'd love to jump into is the way you guys have put together your homes. You've streamlined the process of housekeeping, the presentation of the house, also the communications that go to your guests. What's the, you know, when you think about guest experience, define guest experience for us and how does that translate into the guest travel? So for me, and, and again, that comes from, from my background, um, the best possible guest experience for us is a guest that we don't hear um, or see. Um, and, and that may sound funny because we're in the hospitality business and, and, and I know a lot of, of property managers have the exact opposite view on this and they want to have that personal contact and, and you know, Airbnb is a community and, and everything. Um, but again, what we did with my previous company in e-commerce is each month we would look at um, all the calls coming in, all the emails coming in. They were all tagged with the subjects, what, what guests were, were inquiring about. And then we would tackle our top five questions and make sure that the next month they would not be in the top five anymore. So if everybody was um, inquiring about, hey, where is my delivery? It would be our main priority to make sure that guests did not contact us anymore to ask where their um, delivery was. So we could do that by sending them tracking information, sending them updates. Okay, your package shipped, your package is there, your package has been delivered. Um, so, and the same principle is what we um, do here at, at Casiola. So um, we want to send all the information to the guests um, that the guests need up front so they don't need to worry like where is my home who I do I get how do I get there how do I get access to the home where is my key or, or a door code so all that information that's where it starts um, we send them also information about things to do the theme parks where can I buy tickets how far is your home from the theme parks is there any other attractions to do 
Um, how do I order food? So all these questions that we get on a regular basis, uh, we try to tackle even before the guests have to ask it. So uh, we send them um, a series of emails from the moment they book up until they arrive, um, a whole series of, of preparation uh, um, emails and it's talking about how to get around, how to order food and all of those kind of things. Then once the guest is in house, um, again, there um, the experience has to be uh, um, clear. So when you walk in, uh, for example, we leave a light on in each and every room. So if a guest arrives late at night that they don't walk into um, a dark uh, home that they are not familiar with, we have music playing in the living room. Um, so it, it has that wow of uh, when you walk in, we open all the blinds, all the curtains. So you see the pool right away. Um, then we have um, also um, in-house communication with, with guests um, um, with yeah, information on where to find things, um, how to buy tickets again, um, all, all those different things. Um, and, and again, if, if a guest does not have to contact us during their whole stay, um, then, then we have succeeded in our mission. Uh, we want, of course, the five-star review after they leave. Uh, but if they have everything that they need uh, without having to contact us, um, then uh, mission accomplished. It's interesting, Brian, a couple of things. One is just the way Dennis walked through his thoughts around guest experience really is from the beginning of the guest journey. He, you know, he, he, he probably did it without really thinking about it, but it, you can tell that the thought has been, okay, from the time they, you know, they're looking at homes, do they book to they show up and they, you know, the door code and they walk in and what's it feel like? What's it, you know, we talk about the five senses. What do I smell? What do I hear? What do I see? Um, you know, all the way through checkout and then back again. I, I think that's really interesting, but also, and I'd love to hear Des about how you're doing. I mean, you'd mentioned email, but you know, again, that transparency similar to the homeowner side, right? It's so that you you have access, creating ways where you can self-serve, especially if you want to, um, and giving you access to the things you're you're wanting to find out. How do you do that, Dennis? You know, I know you've built your property management software system and your owner's portal. Have you built a guest app? Do you find the email? Are you using text? I mean, guest communications, I think is is a topic that has been hot here on the guest X podcast yeah. because people are trying to figure out like, how do I get this message best to these guests so that, that they see it? Yeah. 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 So we have had a, a guest app or, or we, we experimented with a guest app in, in the past. We uh, um, used glad to have you. Um, and that was a big failure for us guests do not want to um, install another app on their phone, especially if, if they're only staying a few days uh, with you. It, it's different if you're a Hilton and you have business travelers that, that uh, um, stay with you every single week or, or every month. Uh, but for one time stay in Orlando to go to Disney World, guests don't want to install another app. So we found that the um, email and, and text uh, uh, were the best uh, uh, for us. Um, especially, uh, we do use a lot of, of email because uh, many of our guests are, are international travelers and they don't always have um, um, Wi-Fi or data when they're traveling. So if you only have that information available in an app and you need to log in and have internet, that, that, that may cause an issue. Well, if you have it in your email, um, it's, it's stored locally so you can uh, um, look up the, the door code uh, um, right away. Um, so, but also, some of the things we do, for example, and, and I think a lot of property managers are in the same situation, one of the most asked questions is, can I check in early or can I check out uh, late? Uh, um, so the, the way we tackle those, uh, we already talked about that right away from, from the beginning. So system um, is going to look at the calendar and, and see right away if early check-in may be available or not. So if, a, if an early check-in is, is not available, we also going to communicate that to the guest right away from the beginning. We're going to say, unfortunately, well, 
not unfortunately, but we have a guest checking out the day of your arrival. We need a time between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. to clean and, and get the house ready for you. So unfortunately, early check-in will not be available for your stay. So just adding that saves us like tons and tons and tons of, of calls and, and, and messages that we have to respond to. Even early check-in um, is available. We're also going to communicate that. And, and for us, it's an upsell. So we, we uh, charge guests uh, to check in early. So we offer them two options here in Orlando, um, a 2 p.m. check-in and, and a 10 a.m. check-in. Um, we send it right away with the prices um, because we don't want to give it away for free because if we do that, what is going to take it and then from an operational standpoint it just becomes too hard to get all the homes ready by 10 a.m when we only start at 9 a.m so uh, uh but guests can select it from the email right away okay i want a 10 uh, a.m check-in they go to a portal where they can confirm and the payment information um they get an automatic uh, email with an updated door code the reservation get updated so um, for us, the whole early check-in, late check-out uh, process is completely automated. There's no calls or emails. Of course, we still do get people that call, but 90% of, of guests um, just go through the process and, and there's no human uh, um, interaction uh, necessary. Um, and guests really appreciate that, that it's so easy that they don't have to call in, because especially younger travelers, they, they hate calling. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to uh, speak to a human anymore. Um, <laughs> so it really helps us saving time and, and, and resources on staffing, uh, but it's also better for the guest experience. That's great. Uh, I, I think, you know, you clearly have really looked at this business. I, I think, as we see with most of our guests, your, your background, you know, it, people tend to look at things from, you know, in the perspective of their own experiences, right? And so you've clearly pursued making it more efficient uh, at, at every turn. And, and, and I think that that's how, to, you know, how we, I think, got down this path was how you've been able to scale from 30 to 400 is because you've looked at those efficiencies. So as we wrap up, Dennis, would love to hear a little bit about guest or I think it just rolled out. If I, if I'm correct at Verma, was that when you kind of made the big announcement or was yeah, absolutely. Right that? So that was the first time we, we went public uh, uh, with it. So, um, and, and it's another thing that that started from um, how can we do things better or, or different. And, and what we were seeing is that our owners um, that were actually buying homes and investing in homes most of them were doing it completely uh, wrong. Um, the way they, they set up the deal, the way they purchased, um, not knowing the market, um, paying way too much, not doing the right furnishings, not, uh, um, yeah, and, and not because they did it on purpose, but, but just because, um, yeah, it's a very complicated process. It's not what they do. They don't right. know uh, yeah. better. Yeah. So paying um, cash for, for your house, um, yeah, if you ask some people, that's the smartest thing to do. But if you want to have a return on your investment, you should leverage uh, um, that that the house and 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 uh, um, finance it. And and but then the way you finance it, because we also have a lot of owners that got a mortgage and then they're complaining, oh, I don't make enough money to pay my mortgage and and all the expenses, which is um, another thing you can do interest only loans uh, um, to to avoid those things from happening. So. What we saw is that there's really a lot of, of money um, available, a lot of, of people that want to invest in vacation homes, and especially now um, that we're a hot topic with, with the cars are going public and, and Sonder going public. So also a lot of institutional uh, money, but they don't really know where to go or, or what to do. So we want to um, do the whole process uh, for them. So Gester will be an uh, um, yeah, investment uh, community. Um, and it will be um, like like investing on in stocks on Robinhood. That's how we wanna um, how easy we wanna make it to invest in vacation rentals. So instead of buying a whole home, um, you can um, just buy um, into the fund, and and then you own a little piece of all the homes that the fund um, has. So, uh, for example, if if you wanna invest. 
or instead of having one home, you're now going to have a, um, a small ownership in, in, uh, um, in 20 homes, for example, that can be geographically um, um, diversified in, 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 in the US, but also worldwide. So if something would happen in, in one market or with a specific home, um, the, the impact is going to be much, much smaller because you have 19 other homes where you also get the returns uh, uh, from. So what we want to do is um, make it easier for people to invest in vacation homes, um, make it safer um, because you, you, you don't put all your eggs in one basket, you don't invest all your money in, into one uh, property, but you spread it over uh, multiple properties and multiple um, destinations. Um, and, and then also, um, yeah, we, we um, I, I just lost my uh, uh, train of thought there. No, that's okay. I mean, it, but it, while yeah. you're thinking about that, I mean, it is a big undertaking, Brian, because I mean, yeah. you've got, you've got securities laws and, you know, I mean, there, yeah. there's a lot here for you, Dennis, but I mean, it is, you're right though. You, if people, it's all, I mean, we're really creating a fund for, for yeah. lack of a better term, right? And I own a little piece of this fund, just like you would own a fund that specializes in, in you know, investing in emerging tech or yeah. whatever, you know, the, this is a fund that that's really interesting. Yeah. That is really that's interesting. I think it's fascinating as well on the uh, ability to diversify your, your portfolio, right? I don't want to necessarily buy just a home in Orlando. I want to own a piece of a home all over the world if I can. Um, yeah. So being able to pick and choose homes that I might not be able to afford uh, on my own, but I might be able to afford five or ten percent of a home in you know Con France or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's a fascinating concept. No, absolutely, and and uh, yeah, it, it's also um, more accessible for a lot of people because we saw that with with Casiola, we have so many um, people, potential owners, contacting us that want to invest in a vacation home. But then when they really get into it, they see that they need a lot more money than they initially uh, um, thought. But um, with with this concept, even if you have It's um, vacation home is, is like a beautiful asset class. They can really outperform um, other classes of real estate. Um, but again, you have to do it right. You need to know where to invest, how to set up the home, um, how to decorate the home, and, and uh, how to manage it uh, too, of course. And if you do all those things uh, right, yeah, we're seeing returns uh, of 20, 25% on an annual basis uh, um, by investing in, in vacation homes. So that is a huge difference with uh, the average 10% that you would get on the stock market or, or definitely much different than what you get on a savings account uh, with the banks. So, um, yeah, that's that's what we're working on uh, right now. Um, like you mentioned, it's it's all very regulated. So um, the Securities and Exchange Commission um, is overseeing all this. It was a very long and, and expensive uh, uh, process to to. We are doing Reg D now for accredited investors, and we are in the process to um, do Reg A, which would mean that it's available for everyone, um, every investor, also non-accredited investors. So um, that process takes around four to five months. Um, so that's going on right now. So we hope uh, um, in the next few months that we get uh, additional approval uh, for non-accredited investors. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it really. Is. And yeah, you know, thank you for continuing to think through, you know, different aspects of this industry because, Pete, you know, all these ideas and, you know, ideas like guest, um, you know, guest or are, are what's going to keep bringing people into this industry. Some people are going to come in as guests, some people are going to come in as investors. But again, it's it's keeping the industry out front, which I think everybody wins, right? And it's professionalizing the industry. Yeah. So, um, well, and it, it makes us a little bit unique, right? I mean, this is not uh, an idea like this, and being being able to invest in in units this way, it's a different concept. I don't think that other hospitality uh, sectors have the ability to do something like this. No, no uh, short of short unique. of the hotel, yeah, short of hotels, right, and being publicly traded, and you could own a little bit of Marriott and go stay in a Marriott, but it doesn't feel maybe the same, right? You don't feel like you, nobody walks around and go, oh, I'm part owner of this. I, I, I own Marriott. Like, yeah, nobody. 
<laughs> we turned you like you're an idiot. Um, <laughs> Well, Des, thank you so much. We've we've gone well over time, but but it's been really interesting to hear, and um, I think our I think our listeners are really going to enjoy. But we we really do appreciate the time today. If people want to learn a little bit more about Gastor or Cassiola, how can they reach you? Well, um, we have uh, uh, websites, of course. So um, casiola.com is our property management uh, uh, website. And then you have gestor.com um, for everyone that is interested in um, investing in a vacation home. Thank you very much uh, for having me, guys. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us, Dennis. Absolutely. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you.